So yes, I put beware next to that. Beware. Gummies will take your ass out. Men don't start eating them thinking they Skittles. Next thing you know, you ain't got no job. Hey everybody, it's the Gat Tooth Goddess and I'm here with another video. Keep it nice and short. Anyway, um, yeah, this is kind of like something I've been wanting to talk about because I get different questions in my inbox as far as mushrooms. So I just decided to sit down and write different questions and I wrote 101 things you need to know, ask, and do before doing magic mushrooms. And as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Um, and hit that bell button for notifications because your girl be uploading. Okay. So first I want to start with what is magic mushrooms? So magic mushrooms is not a plant. It's not a, a flower. It's actually a fungus. It's a fungi. A lot of people know that, but some people don't know, or they just starting to get into learning about mushrooms. So there you go. Rune. First thing is it's not a plant it's not a flower it's a fungus and it's over 400 different types of mushrooms and they grow everywhere in the world except for antarctica so antarctica is the only place that don't grow mushrooms um the best place to find mushrooms or the best time to forage for mushrooms is in the spring or in the fall and that's simply because the rapid weather changes and so it'll be raining, raining, and then it'll be a few consecutive days of sunlight and then cold. So the weather fluctuating is a great breeding ground to for mushrooms to grow. So spring and fall, best times to forage for mushrooms. Mushrooms, um, they have both psychoactive effects and also hallucinogenic effects. So obviously hallucinogenic means you have hallucinations. Psychoactive effects is the same as any a lot of other drugs so antidepressants alcohol and painkillers is another one so all of those drugs are psychoactive but mushrooms just have the hallucinogenic aspect along with it it alters the way that you perceive different information so sound vision touch taste all of those will be changed so your senses will be changed they'll be enhanced or whatever else not your sight probably not um, that's why another one, you shouldn't drive or operate machinery while under the influence of mushrooms. But mushrooms do have a strong spiritual component to them as well. And it is a good tool that people been, that people have been using for many years for self-discovery and like a spiritual experience. Are magic mushrooms legal? Hell no. <laughs> no mushrooms are not legal um as of lately they have been doing a lot of studies and it has been decriminalizing a lot of states and more and more states are looking into decriminalizing the use of mushrooms so decriminalization and legalization are two separate things um so it's not legal but it's decriminalized which means it carries a lower sentence or fine so just be careful when you look that up before you decide to use mushrooms. Just remember that it is illegal. Can you get addicted to mushrooms? No, you cannot. Um, and one simple rule for that is because your tolerance, you get tolerance almost instantly when you're taking mushrooms. So if I was to take 3.5 grams today, I could not take 3.5 grams tomorrow. I would actually have to double the dosage or more just to feel the same effects that I had today. So it's, you can't get addicted to mushrooms because it, you get tolerance almost immediately. Also a main factor, um, a main factor of being addicted to something is that you will have to have withdrawal symptoms. So let's say I did microdose 45 days and then I just quit. I wouldn't have any withdrawal symptoms from not taking the mushrooms. So that's also another reason why you cannot be addicted to mushrooms. Okay, so that also leads to, like I said, you build that tolerance up almost immediately. So that leads into the next question, which is how long should I wait in between dosing? 
or in between trips. So you will want to wait between six and seven days up to two weeks, you know, to start to have those full effects of the next mushroom trip. Also, mushroom trips can be very spiritually and emotionally draining. Um, I've had many trips where it's brung up some trauma, a lot of trauma. And even though you cried through it, I didn't feel that same pain. But like, I, that's a personal experience of mine. Um, it does. It brings up trauma. It brings up those doors or those memories that's been closed off. Or even just showing you the way of the world and what it's really all about. Those things are emotional. You know, going on my spiritual journey myself, it is emotional. It's not an easy ride. Trying to relearn and reboot your system of your beliefs that you grew up on. Or whether it's negative or positive. Just rerouting your whole system and shaking up that whole system. It's draining. And I do, you know, I do want people to respect the mushroom. If you watch a video, I already put a video up about that. You definitely need to respect the mushroom. And that the mushroom shouldn't be abused or that experience shouldn't be abused. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, because I do know a few people who do mushrooms just to have a good time. Just to party. They're not necessarily looking for a spiritual connection with the mushroom. That's not the same as saying abusing them. But I do feel like people should respect the mushroom and take that whole experience in and really like take advantage of that. So that's what I would say. Also, the longer that the longer that you wait in between trips, the more intense the next trip will be. So usually typically wait a, between a month and more. Maybe even every other month do a macro trip. Maybe three times a year do a macro trip. Some people, I know it's somebody in the group that I follow that do a macro trip like almost every week, once a week or once every two weeks. Maybe it's once a month. Time is going by so fast, so I really can't even tell you. But it seemed like I see this couple every two weeks doing a macro trip on the beach. So it really just depends on you, but the longer you do wait, the longer the next trip will be. I'm at the the more potent, the stronger the next trip will be. So like I said before, it's all really dependent on the tripper. If this is not your first time doing a magic mushroom trip or not even the second time, you know, then you pretty much know your body. Maybe you don't. It does take a little time to get that sweet spot and to know exactly, you know, the amount that you should take. I'm still learning because I try different strains all the time. It's not something that I have a baseline with. So I can see if I just took Penis Envy and I took 3.5 grams and, you know, I had hallucinations, but I really didn't have too much like um, feeling drowsy the next day. Like it really didn't drain me. Then I know that's a good level for me. Maybe I can go up the next time. Maybe I can stay the same. But with me, I try different strains every time. So it's no telling really what my sweet spot is because I plan on when I did it the first time I did oh I did about five grams my first trip ever I did about five grams and it was wonderful I was still able to play outside I was laying in the lawn making grass angels and touching the trees and stuff but then again I took 3.5 grams of another strain that was Shakti and that took me out I couldn't do anything you know I was laying in the bed just in my mind mostly I couldn't really explore the world so it's all about who you are and finding that sweet spot that you like. Maybe you want to trip or take a dosage that's like a, hero a heroic dose that I took before. And you want to just be in your mind or meditating or see where it takes you. And maybe you want to still be able to function and go maybe to the beach or something. So you'll take a low lower dose. It's just about finding that sweet spot. And that takes a little bit of time. Are you fasting before? Did you take lemon tech? Did you, what did you do? You know? So it's all up to the person. Everybody's different. Okay, we're on the next page, y'all. Our magic mushroom safe. Hell yeah! Ain't never hurt me. Um, of all, actually, of all the recreational drugs, magic mushrooms are deemed to be the safest, and at the same time, it's classified with heroin and cocaine so if you was to get caught with it it's the same classification depending on the state that you're in but it's the most safest rec recreational drug that there is so that's just crazy that lets you know 
the government don't want you to have this good this good potion out here, Lord. Sorry. But that just lets you know the government up to something and they, they keeping it from us for a reason. You don't get addicted to it. It's bringing all these spiritual awakening and really making you love people around you and see what the world and life is really about. Why would you ban a thing like that and make the classification or uh, the penalty on it so high for something that's natural is growing right now in the grass? The biggest health risk of taking magic mushrooms is taking the wrong mushroom. Then you won't have to worry about magic mushrooms and spiritual awakening ever again. Or even awakening. So that's the biggest, um, obviously, danger of it is taking the, taking the wrong mushroom. But I'm sure if you're watching this video, you're not foraging for yourself. You probably have somebody who's supplying the mushroom. But I do not recommend you go out there and forage on your own and try to find mushrooms on your own. You need an extensive education on them. They have books available on Amazon, Google, all of that stuff. But I don't recommend it. And I'm not foraging for shit. Okay. So what are the positive effects of psilocybin mushrooms? So studies have shown that it can cure depression. I wouldn't even say cure, but manage depression without having antidepressants. Depression, alcoholism, addiction, PTSD, anxiety. It increases your creativity. So there's a lot of positive that come with using mushrooms. Especially if you decide to microdose and do small doses over time. Then you will see, like looking back, you will see different changes in your attitude and just the way you think, the way you you work in life, you navigate through life. Mm. Can mushrooms be detected on a drug test? I saw this question, and also in the group that I'm in, somebody like accused them of their test came back positive for opi opioid use. No, you did opioids. The mushrooms ain't make that test come back saying opioid. Only thing that did that shit was opioids, motherfucker. So stop trying to lie. So that was that. Um, it's only in your system for about 24 hours, and it's no. No test will test for psilocybin in your system. No drug test that you take for work or none of that will test for psilocybin. So we under the radar. They don't know we out here existing just doing mushrooms. Okay, y'all? So we're going to keep it that way. How much do they cost? Why y'all asking me? Y'all trying to get me put down. About synergy. But you're not getting one G. I don't know who y'all would get them from, but no. About $40 for about 3.5 grams. 40 to 60, depending on who you're getting them from. So I always advise people to be safe when purchasing mushrooms. Make sure it's somebody that you do know or somebody that's trusted. Do not go on Telegram. Because when I put this video up and I put up Magic Mushroom... The Telegram people are under this stat. So if you see anybody say, follow my IG, Telegram, don't listen to that. I try to bl block them and delete them as soon as I can. Do not listen to that. That's the biggest problem that you will have out here is the scammers. It's so many different scammers. Um, I got scammed twice trying to get them. $50 each time. So I definitely do not recommend Telegram, Instagram, none of that stuff. Do not try to purchase on there. Get somebody that you definitely trust and to get them because that's not something that you want to play with anyway. So definitely get somebody who's known for doing that or that you trust yourself. You trust. Can magic mushrooms expire? Technically, no. If they're already dry, you can technically keep them for a very long time. If they're vacuum sealed and kept in a dark dark place um at room temperature the only thing they won't rot the only thing with the mushrooms they won't like rot or degrade but the potency will go down after about six months um they have like a six month shelf life of potency 
So the potency will definitely decrease significantly after the six months of room temperature mushrooms. So I say vacuum seal, keep them in a, a dark place that's room temperature and they will last way longer up to 12 months, I believe. How to take magic mushrooms? Straight up eat them. No, but for real, it's many different ways that you can take mushrooms. For one, you can straight up eat them hoes. If you one of them people that's not, you got a still stomach, I guess. I've done that once. I've taken the mushrooms, a handful of mushrooms, and just ate them. A lot of people can't do that. They might need something to mask it. I say for first time users, get the chocolate bar. Um, also, okay, so I'll get to the chocolate bar. There's also mushroom tea. So with mushroom tea, that's mainly for people who um, are microdosing. So you could do about one gram, um, not even one gram, 500 milligrams or 250 milligrams would be in each tea bag. It depends, like I said, on who you get it from, who do you who you go to. Um, so for example, we'll say it's 250 milligrams. You could do one or two tea bags. That's 500. You'll do that once a day or maybe maybe once every day, maybe once every other day. But like I said, with mushrooms, it's all about finding your sweet spot, finding what works for you. Everybody's different. Everybody reacts to mushrooms different. So it's all about finding what's right for you. Um, but I recommend the mushroom tea for people who's microdosing. Uh, when I took the magic mushroom tea, I took that in the middle of the day. I was already like lethargic. I still had a lot more stuff to do. When I drunk the tea, it did give me energy for the rest of the day. I was not able to sleep that night, even off the, it was two tea bags, so it was 500 milligrams. Um, I wasn't able to get too much sleep that night, but it did wake me up. It kept me in a good mood for the rest of the day. And I wasn't lethar lethargic anymore. So that's what happened when I took the tea. You can add mushrooms to cooked food or uncooked food. Do not cook the mushrooms with the food. You cannot cook the mushrooms with the food. So let's say you made spaghetti. You can put the mushrooms in there, mix that up and eat it to mask the taste of the mushrooms. Not that they taste like anything, but once you grind up mushroom or been around the mushrooms, they have a certain smell, a groundy, mushroomy smell. And it kind of bring up them old feelings of ooh, mushrooms. Like, you get that feeling. So, you can do it, like, with the spaghetti or whatever you eat. In, um, or uncooked food. So, like, applesauce. I've done it with applesauce before. Um, peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Stuff like that. You can put the mushrooms in there. Eat your sandwich. And you'll be good to go in 40 minutes. Um, I prefer not to eat mushrooms with food simply because when I do mushrooms this is just for me I'm not sure about other people I cannot eat anything I cannot eat food at all because twice now probably even three times that I've done mushrooms I can see the food at a microscopic level so I did mushrooms like right after Thanksgiving and I can like see the ham I was on the ham and I was like microscopically close to the ham I can see the germs and just hair and just I was like oh this is meat like hell no I could I could not eat that ham so you know it might work for other people I know my nephew has done it and he took it with a peanut butter and jelly sandwich but for me I can't do the food um powder form so this is my favorite form if you've watched my previous videos on how to when you see me preparing my mushrooms I'll do a smoothie so powder form and with the powder form uh, it's just easier to take down. You could do it in a smoothie. It's easier to to digest. Little to no nausea when I do it with the smoothie. And that's why I choose that way because you guys know I have Crohn's disease. So I choose the smoothie is the best way for me. You can also put the grounded up mushrooms in a lemon tech. So lemon tech is another method of taking mushrooms. So what you want to do if you do lemon tech, you'll get your grinded up mushroom. I grind them up. Um, you'll squeeze out a lemon. And you let that sit and you put the grinded up mushrooms in there. Mix it up. You let it sit for 30 minutes and then you take it down. So with that lemon, that citric acid, you could do it with a lemon. You could do it with an orange, but it's a lemon tech method. That, ex that extra acid will make it a longer, stronger trip. 
um i personally don't like that because like i said before i have crohn's disease so when i did the lemon tech method that's when i had those five shit attacks that night when i was in the cave so i don't i don't do lemon tech it's heartburn and those mushrooms already boiling in your stomach after you take the mushrooms you can feel the heat in your stomach you can feel them boiling up bringing that magic out so with the lemon too whew, it was just it was too much so i prefer not to do the lemon tech but lemon tech is strong and that is an option that you can do with the grinded up mushrooms the powder form mushrooms but i don't recommend that for anybody with gi problems stomach ulcers acid reflux or GERD. i do not re recommend the lemon tech method i recommend the smoothie method you can use bananas you can use strawberries or whatever kind of fruit that you want. I use a little bit of fruit juice, maybe even get a canned, like canned fruit, fruit cocktail or any of that. I use that fruit juice with those fruit, put a couple frozen fruit in there, the mushrooms, blend it up. You won't taste a thing. Um, also, they have capsules. So the capsules is also for microdosing as well. Um, they come in, depending on who you get them from, my person is what, 200 milligrams, uh, 250 and 500 no she got 50 100 and like 150 milligram or something like that um so it's good for micro dosing i was taking those for a while but with me i never really seen a real effect with micro dosing i guess i wasn't patient enough i want to i want to be gandhi right now i want to take these capsules and be gandhi throughout work that didn't happen i was still aggravated i'm like when is this chick gonna kick in because i'm mad so I prefer not to microdose, but I also will use those. If I do microdose, I'm doing 500 or more. Something that's going to give me some type of, I need to feel some type of effect. Um, also, if I, like once I only had like 3.5 grams of mushrooms, I wanted to do a little bit more. So I would throw in a couple of capsules with that just to take it over to 4 grams or 4.5 grams. So you can also do that with the mushrooms, I mean with the capsules. The chocolate bar, it, like I said earlier, is another good way to. They don't took that person catalytic catalytic converter. They been hitting everybody, but um, the chocolate bar is another one I recommend for, like I said earlier, for people who it's your first time trying magic mushrooms. The chocolate bar would do it. You eat it, look like a Hershey's, and 30, 40 minutes later you seeing willie nelson um i've seen dark chocolate milk chocolate white chocolate kit chocolate bars they range from 3.5 grams to 5 grams in the chocolate bar so that's a one hit or quitter that's all you pretty much need to have a great trip um you can break it apart and share it with other people i'm not sure how other people bars come but from the bars i've seen from my person and other people it does come in those split, like the Hershey bar, so you could break it apart. Also, gummies, y'all. Gummies. That's another one of my favorite. Especially if I'm microdosing. But y'all seen when I went camping, I ate all them gummies and I was I was sweating bullets. I was all messed up on that camping trip. I was supposed to be microdosing. I had the gummies was so good. That's one of the downsides with the gummies. They taste good. I don't know what flavor you're gonna like, but it's plenty of flavors out there. And they range, they, each square is 3.33 grams for a person that I go to. It ranges. And actually, that's the only person I've seen with gummies. So, I don't know if you could find somebody else with them. She, that person got them. Okay. So, yes, I put beware next to that. Beware! Gummies will take your ass out. Then don't start eating them thinking they Skittles. Next thing you know, you ain't got no job. So those are all the ways that you can intake mushrooms. Can you smoke them? Can you smoke mushrooms? Oh, I got a little extra little mushrooms right here. I want to add it to my blunt. No! Can't smoke no damn mushrooms. Heat kills the psilocybin and the mushrooms. Heat kills the active ingredient. So no, you cannot smoke them. You cannot cook them. And that's why I said put it on cooked food. 
You have to cook the food, then put it on there. You cannot heat the, you cannot heat my uh, mushrooms. You cannot cook mushrooms. They don't work. You cannot smoke them. All you're gonna do is damage your lungs. So no, do not smoke mushrooms. I tried it. Coughing and hacking and wasted a good blunt trying to smoke mushrooms. Don't do it. Comparing the effects of the mushroom to the dosage that you take. Okay. So with this, is a large number of variables, okay? Height, weight, do you smoke crack? Did you just do mushrooms yesterday? Are you a habitual weed smoker? Different things are do affect the dosage and the feeling that it gives you. Rule number one, where you get them from? Because I had some one time that was, I had a whole handful, I, I wasn't really feeling it. My person, yeah, you gonna feel it. You gonna be, you gonna be drooling. That's what you gonna do. So it depends on who you get them from. It depends on the strain. Depend on your mood, your location, your company, your music. All of that affects the amount that the mushrooms. All of those determine the amount of the mushrooms that will affect you. They have a dosage cal calculator, though, on Google. So you can look up, put in dosage calculator. It's going to ask you your height. It's going to ask you your weight. Put that in there. It's going to tell you the amount for whatever kind of trip you want to have. So, microdosing. It's up to 0.1. It's up to, I say, one gram. Some of the paperwork or some of the things online say 0 0.5, 0 0.5 grams. I say up to 0 0.9, we could say that. 0 0.9, so a little bit less than one gram is a microdose. It's unnoticeable, but over time you'll feel better. You'll have relieved stress and elevated mood. So <clears throat> that's why I say less than one gram because it's unnoticeable but over time you'll feel an elevated mood you'll feel um relieved of stress throughout time it's not a, a instant thing the next one is a mini dose that's 0 0.5 to one gram that's creative they call that the creative dose that increases your energy smooth and fun more introspective insights so that's around one gram. A moderate dose, one to two grams. Typically more vivid color. So you're really not seeing hallucinations like that, but you can see things do start looking a little bit brighter. You start seeing things on the brighter side. That's true. The grass might be greener, you know, elevated mood, stuff like that. They say that's good for first timers. They said that's good for first timers, but like I said, my first time I did five grams and I went to the moon, straight to the moon. I'm not trying to be walking. I'm trying to go to the moon. Okay. Strong dose, 3.0 to 5.0 grams. So three grams to five grams is a strong dose. Now that's when shit start getting real. That's when you're going to have hallucinations. That's when... You'll have, you'll feel, that's when you'll start having hallucinations. Three grams to five grams, shit is real. That's when you get more sense of oneness with nature. The trees start moving different. Things start looking different. Um, at this level, you might want to be careful. You can experience ego death. That's like the relationship with yourself become a little bit more elastic. You kind of start know, you start to see, and I can't speak for everybody, but for me, you start to see that you're not really who you thought you were all along. You're not really that. You really deeper, you deeper in it. You're not the shell. You're not the name. You're not none of that. It's deeper than that. So that's kind of like when you start to see 
starting to break up those social kind of structures that you always believed. And then they have, they said it's not recommended for first timers, but who am I to judge? The heroic dose, now that's five grams and up. Typically, that's where I usually stay um, from 3.5 up. The most I've done is eight grams. That's a heroic dose. Not recommended. It didn't hurt me in any way or nothing like that, but I don't recommend it because I was totally comatose. I believe it lasted for about eight hours. Um, I threw up. And the next day, I just was like, my energy. But I mean, I couldn't even get up. I couldn't do anything. I was just totally like laid out dead. Like, and that's eight grams. That was eight grams. So like I said before, it's all really about the person, what you comfortable with doing. And, you know, if you have any experience in doing mushrooms. How long does a trip last? Personally, with me, Lemon Tech was the longest trip that I had. The Lemon Tech. It lasted all night until the morning. I believe I did them at around 8.30 p.m. It lasted all the way until 5 a.m. So that was the longest trip that I've... That was the longest time I've been on a trip. But a lot of times it's kind of hard to gauge because you kind of... You lose a sense of time time is going forever then time is going short time is going forever so it's really you'll have to write that down okay this is the time i'm taking the mushrooms and then once ever you come back down to earth then you'll write this is when i end it but other than that you really can't really tell if you're not looking at a clock or anything like that um because time isn't really real it becomes elastic as well like it goes on forever it seems like also, it depends on what you do. So, the last time I did mushrooms, I fasted. The mushroom trip lasted long, and it was very strong. So, it depends. Did you eat that day? Did you eat junk that day? Did you smoke weed that day? Did you drink alcohol? Which is not recommended, guys. If, you're, if you want to do mushrooms, try to fast. Try to clear out your system and drink a lot of water. That's the best way to have a trip. And if you do want snacks to the side... Get you some fruit. Get you stuff with that citric in there that'll boost up your um your tripping experience. But I don't recommend eating a feast um, or anything like that. But if that's something that you want to do, then feel free to do that. It's, it's your trip. When I take mushrooms at night is another thing. When I take my mu magic mushrooms at night or it's dark outside, the trip lasts all the way until the morning. When I took the mushrooms the first time, that was five grams. I took it about 12 noon. It was over at 5 p.m. And I was able to go on with my day. Yeah, my eyes were swollen from crying all day. But I, well, I didn't have a headache. I didn't feel like drained of energy. I was still able to go on with my day. So, yeah, that's what I noticed with myself. If I take them at night, it lasts all night until the day. If I take them during the day, it's four, four hours and I'm, I'm done. Okay, guys, we are almost through. This is it. This is the last page. Okay. So now we're getting into trip sitting. Do you necessarily need a trip sitter? Your girl? I ain't getting no trip sitter. I'm a G. It is recommended for first time users to have a trip sitter. But I don't believe that you need a trip sitter. Don't keep in mind I'm no expert. But nobody is. I'm no expert. Okay. So... Let me just throw that out there. Do whatever you're comfortable with doing. But personally for me, I do not want a trip sitter. And I feel like the reason for that is you get more of an experience when you're alone. If you're scared or apprehensive about it, by all means, get a trip sitter. But for me, the experience is better when you're alone. You're able to open up. You're able to cry. You are experiencing all those emotions without somebody around judging you. So if you have somebody who's good and they're not judging you and they've done mushrooms before, by all means, get that person to be a trip sitter. But personally, for me, I feel like it's more stronger connection with the universe, with yourself and everything else that exists. 
when you do it alone. But like I said, every trip is different, guys. If you're not comfortable being alone, get a trip sitter. This is your first time and you're not really sure, get a trip sitter. Or I wouldn't even say somebody that you can call because who's to say you're going to be able to call anybody? Might not be able to reach the phone. Seriously. Um, like I said, I never had a trip sitter. I feel like it's really a personal experience when you unshroom. You laugh, you cry. Um, and I really feel like I wouldn't have been myself 100% had I had somebody else there with me. But if you do want a trip sitter, guys, these are the, this is the guy for trip sitting. You need somebody who's calm, non-judgmental, and they also have experience in taking mushrooms. You can't get a trip sitter who don't know nothing about mushrooms, never took no mushrooms, don't know what a trip looked like, and don't know that it's normal to be crying. It's normal to have snot running down your nose and tears running out your eyes. Those things are normal. Um, Somebody who respect your boundaries, not really try to put their experience on you. Oh, well, when I was on shrooms, this and that, we don't need none of that. We don't need none of that. That's their experience, and we need to respect that and respect their boundaries. Keep it quiet. If they crying and asking for help, yeah, you help, but you don't have any input on nothing that they have going on because you're not in their head. Also, your trip center don't need to be on mushrooms because I was supposed to be helping my friend walk through his trip, but we ain't take a lot. I thought we was good. He had 3.5. I grounded it up. You know, so that was really like 1.5 each, if anything, because the bottom still had the smoothie. You know, that last little bit you can't drink. So we did really about 1, 1. 1.5 each at the most. And that joint really kind of took me out a little bit. And he was like a little bit paranoid. And I'm trying to walk him. He running out the door. I'm like, hold on, I'm supposed to be tripping saying, wait. I'm supposed to be walking you through, but I'm rolling. I'm laughing so hard. So note to self, never trip if you're ch if you're helping somebody else. If you're supposed to be a trip sitter, that's like having a baby as a babysitter. How the fuck y'all going to be the same thing? So like I said, don't try to become part of the trip. That's with doing the mushrooms and also trying to navigate like, oh, oh, yeah, I remember I seen this and that. Like, shut the hell up. Let that person go through what they're going through. So that's why I always, I say, I don't want a trip sitter. I like to do my mushrooms on my own, get my own emotional or whatever experience that I'm getting out of it. I also believe that it's no such thing as a bad trip. I feel like it's a hard trip, but a bad trip, I really don't agree with that. Sometimes I feel like these trips just showing us things that we don't want to see about ourselves. Um, But it can, your trip can be alter depending on your mood your setup and the people that you have around i cannot stress this enough guys be careful of the company you keep when you unmushroom if they're not positive if they not don't have them around because the trip will not be worth it if you have something that kind of energy around you so just be careful of the energy around you and the company that you keep when you're on mushrooms and when you're not Those uncomfortable trips where it's putting you in that mirror and seeing, you know, that ugly reflection or whatever the case is, the mushroom's going to keep it real with you. It's up to you to take that and change your life around or start, you know, moving different or acting different. It's up to you, but the mushroom's going to show you what you need to see. So even with setting your intentions, you know, God, or whatever, you know, you know, I really, I'm, I'm lost in life right now. I really want to figure out what life is all about. You know, I'm lost with my career. I really want to figure out, is this the job for me or what is this? What am I doing? You take those mushrooms, you can see that. You can see that. You have the potential to see that. But maybe you won't. But just keep an open heart and keep an open mind and know that the mushrooms are telling you exactly what you need to know when you need to know it when you are ready for that information the mushrooms are is telling you that so a bad trip is closing yourself off to what's being presented a hard trip you're opening yourself up so that's why i feel like people say it was a bad trip they ready for it to be done you can't go to sleep you can't do nothing you have to wait it out once you take the mushrooms you have to wait it out ain't no 
nothing you can take to counteract that effect. It's over for you for the next five to nine hours. So just know. And that's another point I made in this. That's a good point, Crystal. That is a good point. When you take mushrooms, you realize that all those labels are not even real. Bad trip, hard, good. None of these things are real. These are all labels and they all have their own perception depending on who's saying it. So what is a bad trip? Is it because it lasted forever? Is that what people scared of? Because it lasted for five hours? Like, what made it a bad trip? Because you didn't have control? Like, you usually like to have control in your life. And now you don't. You relinquish all control with taking these mushrooms. So, that's what's funny to me. Because it's actually ironic. Because taking that mushroom, see that these are all social... Social constructs that they put on things good bad rich poor you know evil good all of these things have a different meaning to everybody so that's the the irony of it all you had a bad trip but when you took the mushrooms you see that it's no such thing as bad it's no such thing as good so i don't know it's a little bit confusing but i think that's all i have for y'all right now and i'm doing another video y'all on sex on mushrooms i got two story times for you um with that that's gonna be after this video so i'm putting this out there i'm letting y'all know those is 101 y'all can count on what y'all want because i know it was 101 i don't know i started kind of losing track but these are all the things you need to know do and ask before doing mushrooms okay it's your girls the gap two goddess everybody have a hunky dory life if y'all have any other questions about mushrooms, feel free to write it in that comment box below. I answer every comment. Anybody that send me a comment, I'm answering it. So please, guys, let's get more interactive. I love y'all. But it's the Gap Tooth Goddess, and I'm out, y'all.